her model like wax, and she sails in the wind. She is rugged and fitted and curiously trimmed, and all things convenient as for her design. God bless his poor fancy. She is bound for the mine. This was a poem written in 1694 by Captain Henry Every, the captain of one of the most historic pirate ships of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. Today, I am thrilled to introduce you to the treasure that embodies the spirit of adventure, the legacy of maritime exploration, and the timeless value of precious metals. This is the fancy silver billion coin hailing from the nation of Tuvalu. Just take a look. Gorgeous. Allow me to take you on a journey through history where imagery of this coin comes together to tell a story of daring voyages and enduring wealth. This is the fifth coin in the infamous Black Flag series which has become one of the most popular low minute series that I can think of. In fact, the Queen Anne's Revenge, which is right here, take a look at that. There's the Queen Anne's Revenge. That was the first in the series, and it is shot up in price dramatically, and likely the fancy will do the same. The coin features not only the boat, but also the name of the captain, Henry Every. He was the king of pirates, or so they say. So let's learn about the iconography, and then we can place this amazing coin on our 60-point scale. Pirate vessels often have fun origin stories as they were most often commandeered by some type of maritime battle or stolen. The fancy has much more unique story. To set the scene, we need to understand that England and Spain were in war with France, again, which caused a host of issues in itself. Many were struggling to live on meager means, as the war was hungry and needed to be fed. Henry Every was decorated in the Royal Navy of England and a well-versed sailor. He was discharged after a disastrous campaign the English had at the Battle of Beachy Head, which opened his schedule up to work in some other capacities. Every's next big role was as a captain in the Atlantic slave trade under a contract from the governor of Bermuda. It was in this role where we saw the capacity for ruthless attributions often associated with pirates. Most of Every's life as a slave trade captain lay undocumented. In 1693, Every transitioned to a merchant carrier for a wealthy Englishman who wanted to help the English economy by creating a trade network between Spain and England. This ambitious venture was known as the Spanish Expedition Shipping. In this endeavor, Every was given a commercial contract to go between the two nations of England and Spain. Charles II of Spain, who apparently used lots of sunscreen, then commissioned a large vessel which originally was named Charles to be built. This is the boat that would become the Fancy. Under the Trading and Salvage License, Every had quite a bit of wiggle room in his abilities on the sea, which opened up new opportunities. Every would sail to the West Indies, salvaging Spanish ships and keeping a lion's share of the loot. He also led successful campaigns on the French outposts, which added to his loot. Eventually, Every went in a different direction, one of piracy. He, over time, amassed a crew and a couple of ships to form an armada and also changed the name of Charles to the Fancy. In doing so, he also transformed the ornate Baroque ship into a sleek nautical war machine. The Baroque period was all about ornamentation, so that boat would have been representative of the wealth of a nation. This is not efficient for a pirate, as the added weight of galleries and decks led to slow, slower maneuverability and overall speed. Every stripped his fancy to bare bones, making it the most fast and agile boat in the area. This was one of the prime reasons for the success of nautical conquest. It could zoom away from enemy vessels and it could turn on a dime to engage. One of the most notable battles was evident when the Fancy took on the Ganja Sawai. This was a very large ship of the Mughal Empire which sailed in a company of over 25 ships that came in contact with the small pirate flotilla led by the Fancy. 
Single boats in the Mughal Company had over 80 cannons, let alone the whole fleet. This being said, the Fancy and its flotilla were outgunned and outmanned, and yet the infamy of the Fancy carried weight in the hearts of the Mughal sailors. Cannon fodder and saltwater mixed for hours. The sheer size of the flagship, Ganja Sawai, actually led to a disadvantage as the smaller Pearl and Fancy, when close up, were not in direct fire line of the Mughal cannons. The pirates did, however, have to throw grappling hooks to climb the steep sides of the vessel where more direct melee took place. Once the flagship was taken, the other ships of the Mughal fleet fell in line and the pirates ruled the day. It is thought that over 500,000 gold and silver pieces were plundered, which were enough to buy new fancy vessels 50 times over. Historians believe that this might have been the most rewarding pirate plunder of all time. Now that you know a little bit about this fantastic vessel and its captain, let's place it on our 60 point scale to see where it ranks. When we take a look at the obverse, which is right here, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We see a couple of things. We see that this is the Iron Rank Broadly likeness, the IRB, you'll see that, of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We also see that there has the years of her reign, 1952 to 2022. This is a really cool touch as it's both rewarding historically, but it also serves almost as a privy mark as this is the only year signifying the years of her reign. We also see that this coin was issued under the island of Tuvalu, which as such we see four nines in a beautiful frosted background. I absolutely love the design and it scores an eight. Now for the reverse. Boats are always welcome on silver coins as nautical themes seem to be increasingly popular. This coin goes a step further and offers pirates. When one thinks of pirates, it's hard to separate the treasure aspect, which is the focus of so many children. Pirate silver is so iconic and having coins of silver that feature pirates just seems right. This design is beyond fantastic as we see the fancy with open chests of loot as a rival ship slowly succumbs to the depths of the ocean. In the fog of battle, we see a skull rising from the horizon. We also see the mint mark of P, which tells you two things. One, that this was minted at the Perth Mint, and two, having been minted from the Perth Mint, the quality is world class. This series has some of the coolest font we will see in bullion coins, and I love that we have both ship and captain named on it, so it scores a 10. Mintage is where we go to next. This coin comes in with a fantastically low global mintage of 15,000. This means you need to get your hands on one of these as soon as possible. It scores a nine. Now for the elephant in the room. I knew this day would come. I'm not happy that I will have to say what it is I will say, but it must be said. We are now in the realm of cultural significance. Tuvalu is the nation that issued this coin. Tuvalu does not fall under the protectorate of English Commonwealth country. In fact, here Tuvalu is on a map. We know that Captain Every and his fancy sailed notably around the Cape of Good Hope towards India and even to the New World in places like the Bahamas, but not to this area of the Pacific. Tuvalu was seen by the Spanish in the late 1500s, but not really intertwined with European influence until the 1800s when whaling started to expand. This being said, the Venn diagram of connectivity between the Fancy and Tuvalu falls rather flat, so I must score to three. Collectability is next. It has been my experience that the nautical themed coins are highly collectible in silver. Pirate themes seem to be more collectible and historic themes are always a hit. Pair that with good design and you have a home run. In fact, my Queen Anne's Revenge coins, which was the first in this series, has gained more market value than any coin I own, which shows you the absolute strength of this series. It scores a 10. Uniqueness is our last area. Believe it or not, of all the notable pirates and vessels to historians, this is the one they love, but to regular civilians, they really don't know a lot about it. This being said, when I looked at a numismatic catalog to try to figure out if there are other bullion coins like this, I couldn't even find one. I did see some cool silver from the horde taken from the Mongol Empire by Every and his fancy though. It scores a resounding 10, bringing us to our final thoughts and score. 
In spite of scoring a three for cultural significance, the fancy plundered and pillaged its way to the elite level of bullion. If you have one, to the victor go the spoils, and if you don't have one, stop right now and get it. This is a fantastic coin, and I cannot wait to see the value over time rise. As you noticed, I actually have two of these, and maybe I will do a giveaway eventually. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, please remember to stay classy and current with the culture of currency.